Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in Physics Surgery Quickies wherein I bring forward to you small little concepts that would enhance your understanding of physics and raise you towards the success in JE Advanced and Olympiad examinations. So I brought forward to you a famous question from a previous Russian Olympiad, uh, which is about having a large water mass, large water body, as you could call it, and in which there is a air bubble and there is an iron ball kept at a distance r from each other. The size is the same. And using only gravitational forces, remember there is no other gravity uh, in the downward direction. So the water body itself is like a planet, which is huge. Okay, so there is no earth otherwise. So the only gravitational force is between this bubble, this ball and these water particles. Okay, so using these forces alone, you're supposed to uh, calculate what is the net value of attraction or repulsion between the bubble and the iron ball. Uh, there are a lot of answers floating in the internet on this particular questions, which I'm not satisfied with. So we'll try to see the correct reasoning behind attraction or repulsion. I also try to see a smart way of calculating the answer. Okay, so here we go ahead with the question, right? So if you want to give it a try, pause the video. Uh, read the question on your own, underlined one. Okay, so I've added some more parameters here for the calculation of it. Okay, so here let's move ahead. I'll read out the question, then give you the solution and we'll top it off with a practice problem at the end. An air bubble with a radius R and an iron ball with the same radius are present in large water mass or large water body. Will they be attracted or repulsed from each other based on the gravitational force of interaction? What is the force of interaction between them? The distance between the center of the ball and the bubble is R. So this is actually a translation of a Russian examination question. So the translation, there is some meaning lost in it. Okay, so let me be very clear. There is a large water mass, which I can't show in the screen. So assume all this black part of the screen is a water in which bubble is there and there is an iron ball separated by a distance r okay since he has not given any other parameters i'll uh, use these parameters in the final answer mass of the water displaced by either the ball or the bubble is equal to m1 that means when this bubbles volume you had a water body here you would have had a mass of m1 mass of the iron ball is given as m2 and mass of the air bubble as expected which is m3 is very very small compared to either of m1 and m2 is something that you are supposed to take and i again let you know that there is no other gravity other than these three objects there's no earth there's no g in the downward direction that you are supposed to understand water is supposed to be infinitely large volume okay so I hope you have given it a try. Let me move forward with the concept. And before we do that, a humble request as I keep doing to keep this channel running is uh, just make sure once the concept is very clear and you enjoyed and got something out of this video, uh, just give me a free like. And once the likes reach 750 for this particular video, I'll upload the next one, which would be another awesome one. Okay, so I hope you understand why I'm doing this and uh, YouTube algorithm spreads the videos with the greatest likes. So uh, you have been doing it uh, for the last few videos also. So I expect the same kind of support and which uh, I'll be ever thankful for. So once this is done, uh, let me start analyzing the bubbles net motion. A lot of things on the screen, as I keep saying, don't read it on your own. Just follow my lead when I point on the screen. I'll try to explain it. You try to understand. Okay, right. So now imagine in this particular screen, the entire black part of the screen is also water. Okay, so this is all water that you have to visualize. It's very difficult to draw. So once this bubble and this red colored one is iron ball, as you could see, I labeled them, are having some gravitational forces. Remember, uh, the force of uh, uh, on the bubbles FBD will be due to the non-contact gravitational force between this iron ball and this bubble, which we'll talk about, and also the, the force from the rest of the water. Apart from that, there will be some contact force due to the pressure that would be developed on the surroundings of this bubble. You might think, okay, this should be a uniform pressure, so there should not be a net force. And that is where the trick in this question lies. So in order to symmetrically solve this problem, I'll try to visualize that there is a water ball here. Okay, right. Water is everywhere. I've drawn a contour of one water ball, which is equivalent to the size of each of these. And I'd argue that rest of this entire water body is going to put zero force on this one because of the symmetry. So my problem boils down to now calculating the net force on this bubble due to this water ball, equidistant water ball and this iron ball. 
and also the pressure forces. Okay. Now I uh, I claim that the iron ball puts a greater gravitational force force by iron ball Fi compared to the force by the water ball. That is pretty evident. So if you consider only this Fi and Fw's resultant, you might get a feeling that the bubble will move towards right towards the iron ball. But as I said, that is not all it. This iron ball's gravitational field is going to ensure that more water gets crowded in and around this. This can be a, a, a understood as gravitational pressure that would be developed in the and around the vicinity. Assume that in and around this neighborhood, the pressure is on an average a P2. But if you consider the water's mass, remember mass of water is smaller compared to mass of the iron ball. Therefore, the gravitational pressure that would be developed by sucking the water in and around it would be smaller and we'll call it as P1. Using this P1's profile, if I move slowly towards right, there will be a P1 prime on an average, which would be the pressure force on this one. And when you move this way, the pressure would be P2 prime. That means due to the asymmetric locations of the iron ball and water ball, the bubble will experience different pressure forces on the either side. And we claim that the pressure force, you could see that pressure profile I have drawn at the bottom. Okay, these Fi and Fw are pure gravitational forces. These are pressure forces, okay, due to the gravity itself. And this pressure force, P2 prime into pi r square, which is the projection area, and this is P1 prime into pi r square, this P2 prime will dominate. So to summarize, there are two factors that will uh, encourage the ball to move. One is the Fi minus Fw, which is towards right, that is gravitational force, Gm1, M2 by r square style. And pressure factor force, which is the P2 prime pi r square minus P1 prime, which is going to be towards left because this dominates this one. Now we have to ascertain which of these factors dominate one on another because these two are going to produce an opposite movement. Now realize that this Fi minus Fw would be uh, having a factor proportional to M3 of M2 minus M1. Remember, uh, the gravitational force is related to M3 into M2 divided by R square and M3 into M1. When you subtract, you get this factor. Whereas factor two, which is the thing related to the gravitational pressure, is going to be related to M2 square here, and here it is M1 square. It has nothing to do with the mass of the bubble. So factor two, which is M2 square minus M1 square, is going to dominate the value of M3 into M2 minus M1. Remember, M3 is very negligible. Since the factor two dominates, and surprisingly, if you don't take it into account, you'll get a wrong answer. So the factor two dominates, and the bubble is going to move towards left which is opposite the gravitational force. So uh, uh, it should move away from the iron ball on an effective basis. So it's the net uh, interaction that I'm talking about and moves away. Now let's try to do the same thing with the iron ball. So let's keep iron ball in the middle. I'll take this as the center with bubble on this side. I'll assume water ball on the right side. So let's carefully observe the diagram. Now I'm going to the iron ball situation. So analyzing iron ball's net motion. So with iron ball at the center and bubble to its left in that previous picture, I'll take the similar water ball on the right side with rest of the screen, all is water, remember, okay? Same logic, uh, two factors will be there. Uh, one is the gravitational force, which will be dominated towards right. And one is the pressure force, which is dominated towards left. Okay, right? This FW is subtraction of these two. This one almost doesn't put any value of the uh, gravitational force because M3 is negligible. Also, it doesn't have much of a gravitational pressure itself. So both this FW and delta P into pi r square are produced by this. Now I have to again judge which of these two is going to dominate. As expected, the gravitational force form FW is related to M2 into M1 factor, whereas the pressure uh, force is going to be related to M1 square factor. Remember the crowded water and all that. I have to decide whether M1, M2 dominates or M1 square. And you know, iron balls mass M2 is la larger than mass M1. Therefore, this product dominates this one. So in the case of iron ball, it is the FW that dominates over pressure. So iron ball moves towards right. So as a consequence, we got both actually move away from each other. So we'll combine the two things on one part of the screen. If you didn't understand any of this, just try to pause, go rewind and read both these sides properly with my voice. You'll understand. So I'm combining both slides now. You'll see four objects now. Okay, I've slightly reduced the size to fit them in the screen. I'm combining the two analysis. Remember in the actual question, only bubble and iron ball were given. This entire black screen was water, inside which I'm putting now one small water ball contour, one small water. Actually, this is all blue color. Entire thing is blue color, which I can't draw. So a small blue part, this represents water. 
this also represents water okay so for a bubble one we said the delta p part dominates and pushes it to the left for the iron ball it is the gravitational force that dominates and pushes it to the right so overall when someone sees this right in this hypothetical world of water the iron ball and bubble move towards move away from each other okay so the key here is to identify the importance of the third body if someone says what is the gravitational force alone between iron ball and bubble it is always attractive it is the other part that is the water's interaction is going to make it in look like an apparent repulsion now with this proper understanding we will now develop a concept called negative mass superposition to calculate the value of this force okay so we will now try to calculate so this is the analysis part in the next slide we will make the calculation okay calculating the net force using the negative mass superposition okay now in that step one what we are going to do is we will assume the bubbles mass m3 is for calculation purpose almost negligible to zero and i will say this zero bubble can be visualized in water as sum of a positive mass water and a negative mass water and overlapped onto each other so it's like this zero is equal to m1 plus minus m1 at the same place so in actuality when there is a bubble here and facing an iron ball and this bubble wants to move towards left because of repulsion the water part should come and replace this one so this left side there is a lot of water here also all this screen is water so if bubble moves towards left like this the water here should replace it that is the actual thing that is going to happen whereas a superposition allows us to believe this way okay so let me show you with that uh, superposition thing now what does superposition believe is this bubble shaped one is visualization of overlapping of plus m1 and plus minus m1 and this water is really available there okay so instead of bubble going personally here it is this minus m1 within these which will go and merge with this plus m1 and minus m1 and plus m1 merge with each other and produce a zero here so that's the visualization and so you can say effectively it is the negative mass uh, of the superposition which is getting referred same thing can be said here i have not drawn uh, at this place when the iron ball is going to move towards right like this uh, the water ball has to replace this one here okay because there is water here 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 ball moves towards right water water ball should come here so effectively how much mass is moving towards right it would be m2 minus m1 that would move towards right remember once the ball moves here it is not zero at this place so there is m1 that would be available here so it is the m2 minus m1 so overall it is effectively a movement of a minus m1 of this one this side and m2 minus m1 towards right how to get this in a visualization okay so this is the concept right let's let's see how to get the visualization this is the ultimate part of the video okay in order to put all the hard work of our understanding to uh, the proper fruit calculation of net force using the negative mass superposition so actual system is this water body i tried my best as in the thumbnail to create a water body remember this water body extends to infinity there is a bubble inside that there is an iron ball okay now i'll claim that if this entire water body is replaced with a negative mass water body which is symmetric without anything only difference is all this water in your mind on the right is a my negative mass of this water so when you replace this because of symmetry the net force is not going to change so what will happen when a minus m mass of this one a small part is going to fit into this bubble it will stay as minus m but it will cancel all this water and what will happen a minus m1 mass of this side water going to overlap onto the iron it will become a new repulsive body called m2 minus m1 and rest of it all now becomes vacuum so effectively the problem becomes a, a gravitational force between a minus m1 which is a negative water ball and an m2 minus m1 you could see i tried my best to uh, merge a red color and a blue color negative mass here so the value of the repulsive force uh, is because this is a negative sign one and this is positive so it will be a repulsive force in this hypothetical situation g m1 into m2 minus m1 by r square some of the students do come up with a wrong answer that it is a uh, repulsive force between a minus m1 and m2 no it is repulsive force between minus m1 and m2 minus m1 you are overlapping in a future question you can replace this bubble with an wooden ball and ask it's all about re, uh, overlapping a complete negative water body onto both the objects it's the both objects that is going to give you the answer i hope you understood and like this one uh, 
I, I hope you are waiting for the practice problem uh, on a similar lines about the negative mass concept. So let me go there. Before I go there, uh, it is just to alert you that I am on different uh, places for you to contact me. So Discord server, Telegram and website, all the links are given in the about me section of this channel, along with the social media handles. So please do check out the about me section of this channel. Okay, so and also there is a website, as I told you, and that all the playlists and videos of this channel are arranged in a particular chapter wise uh, way. And it will be good for quick revision for the JE aspirants, especially those who have found this channel a bit late because YouTube usually doesn't recommend my channel that much. OK, so that's why I keep liking the video so that it reaches uh, a greater number of set of people to keep me motivated. So this is a practice problem. So again, a JE advanced level problem. There are five options. I made the fifth one here and comment your answer along with the timestamp after reading the question. So it is uh, related to a concept that I have taught in this particular video. I'll answer this if you struggle uh, in the AATS select series in the channel, okay? And uh, you can also wait for the video to be produced, which takes longer time for the videos. Uh, you can uh, post this particular practice problem question or any discussion related to this gravitation chapter in our Discord server. There is a separate gravitation channel there. Already the Discord server has crossed a serious 2.5K aspirants. Uh, a lot of students help each other there by discussing proper subject. So please go there. And in case you are new and you don't know what is Discord server, I made a video tutorial on how to use Discord and how the Physics Surgery official Discord server is beneficial for students. Please do check out. And also the QOTDs in that particular uh, uh, server, which is questions of the day, are being posted in this community tab of the channel. So please go and scroll through. You'll enjoy them a lot. Okay. And apart from physics surgery quickies, there are multiple series. I've written only four here. There are many more series that are going on parallel in this channel, keeping uh, and helping students in their preparation of JE advanced and Olympiads and also general physics lovers. So please do check the links of all these playlists are in the description below. I hope you enjoy watch two or three videos per every day. And uh, if you like them, try to subscribe to the channel. OK, and like sharing and subscribing to the channel will keep this channel alive and also my motivation to continue uh, as much as possible, which I would definitely do. OK, so thanks a lot for staying this long and see you in the next awesome video. Thank <laughs> you.